Today I'm going to show you how I make rocket fuel from sugar. This sugar fuel can be used to fill E12 or D12 motors like this. And these are a lot of fun. I'll have an upcoming video on how to use this in my terraformer, my tumble rocket, and show you how I got it to work. You can also use the fuel for 38 millimeter motors like this one, which I've flown a number of times or even smaller ones down to the 240, a super G or three grain, something like that. Anyways, it's very useful. It's called flexi fuel and uh, it's called flexi fuel because carol syrup is added to it. Now the carol syrup helps with dissolving the sugar so it doesn't require nearly as much heat like our candy to make the fuel and that is a definite advantage. So I'm going to show you a couple of the tools I use, talk about safety briefly, and then we'll get started with the casting video. Before you even get started, you'll need one of these. Yes, a fire extinguisher. This is an ABC, so it will put out any kind of fire. I have several of these in my house and you need one of these for safety, even if you don't make rocket fuel, it's just a good idea to have one on hand and to have one in the garage if you're working out there too. Keep this 10 feet away from your workspace. That way, if there is a problem, you can get to it. Another thing that you'll need is a digital infrared thermometer like this. They're inexpensive. Uh, I'll leave a link in Amazon so you can pick one of these up. Uh, any link that I leave in the description is uh, one that will earn me a small commission. I would appreciate that very much. The next thing you need is some sort of heat source. I prefer an induction cooktop like this. And I'll leave again another link, but uh, I prefer the induction cooktop because it's uh, safer, in my opinion, because the cooktop only gets as hot as the pan. Unlike this type that I used previously, it gets very hot, the coils get very hot, it's difficult to control the heat. Now, I know some people are not going to want to make the investment for just to make a little bit of fuel to see if they like doing it or not. I have a previous tutorial where I did use that type of cooktop and you can check that out. But I highly recommend that you get the induction type because it's a lot easier to manage the fuel and to uh, keep the, the space safe. Now, the next thing you'll need is a pan and this takes a special pan for the induction cooktop. It uh, will tell in the description and it really helps to have a small pour spout like this one has and that way you can guide the propellant as you're casting it. Okay, well that's about it for the specialized tools. Let's get started. I just want to warn you, this is real rocket fuel. It can catch on fire. This is not something that you cook on the stovetop in the kitchen or something like that. It is best done outside in an area away from the house. I'm doing it in the studio today because I have a lot of experience and I want to show you how to do it. But please, be responsible, do it outside. I'm going to use cooking spray to lubricate the mandrels and the other casting parts to keep the propellant from sticking to them. You can also use a mold release spray like this stoner spray. And if you're going to make sorbitol, this is the go-to. This is the stuff to use because that stuff is really sticky. Now I have a tutorial on how to make sorbitol grains too. You may want to check this out. So I have weighed out everything. Make sure you use a decent scale that will weigh within a tenth of a gram like this one. It's, uh, it's either right or it's not. So make sure that you weigh everything out properly. Now the fuel uses a standard 65-35%, 65% oxidizer, 35% fuel, which in this case is sugar or a type of sugar like corn syrup. And so I'll go over that in just a second. So I am making 250 grams. That's enough for an H motor. It will fill four of these Bates grains that I'll use for my H motor. And so I need 162 and a half uh, potassium nitrate, KNO3. I'll leave a link for the source. I use 45 grams of corn syrup, which I just put, put in a small Dixie cup. And I'll usually put an extra three or four grams in it because it's very sticky and kind of hard to get out. That way I don't have to worry about getting every little tiny last drop out. I use 42 and a half grams of regular granulated sugar. Previously, I used powdered sugar, found out that wasn't really necessary. It's actually easier to mix the regular granulated sugar, so that's what we're going to use. I'm using Carol corn syrup for the fuel, and this is the light version of it. Now, this is very common in the United States, and I understand it is not common throughout the rest of the world. So I am working on a substitute for that, 
But for now, I'm going to stick with the corn syrup. Now, this is actually part of the fuel. It is uh, dex like dextrose or glucose. It's just kind of a liquid version of that. It also has several other sugars blended into it. And uh, it really makes for a good flexi fuel. So we're going to stick with this for now until I can come up with something else. I have sprayed all the tooling with the cooking spray and they're all ready to go. The casting tube is from Always Ready Rocketry. I'll leave a link in the description. This is a piece of thermal tube that I reused and I now tape the tops of these because it makes cleanup a little bit easier and it keeps the uh, tubes from floating up when I push down with the coring tool. The coring tools are 3 8 aluminum. You can also use Delrin. Uh, it's a little bit too hot for 3D printed as far as the coring tools, but the parts I'm using are made out of Corian. I made them on the lathe. You can use uh, 3D printed materials for that. Uh, high heat type of plastic would probably be the best. Uh, these are standoffs that I'll use in just a minute. And I have some craft stick to manage all the propellant. Okay, so our tray is ready. I'll move this aside and we'll get the induction cooktop out and start making the fuel. I have added some leftover fuel from a previous casting and now it's time to put our corn syrup in or carol syrup. Let's get as much as you can out of the cup and we are going to start it up and let this all melt together. I have my digital thermometer ready and I am running at 600 watts of power. You can set this up to heat by temperature but uh, I prefer to just watch it, keep an eye on it, and use the infrared thermometer to monitor it. Now I'm gonna heat the corn syrup up and uh, I'll let it melt the previous propellant that I put in there. I don't wanna let it boil too hard. If it boils a little bit, that's okay, but I actually wanna leave a little bit of the water in it at this point. I have turned the power down to 200 watts because it started to boil. And uh, you can see here, it's starting to break up the propellant. So we'll let that mix up a little bit more before I start dumping the other components in. But it's almost ready to add the sugar. Okay, I'm gonna add the sugar to it. I'm gonna pour about one third of it in or so. I have added some of the sugar to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of it and turn the heat up a little bit. I am at 600 watts. Let's check the temperature again. I'm at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, all, all the uh, quotes I make will be in Fahrenheit because uh, that's the world I live in. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the potassium nitrate. That makes for all of our components. And I'm going to keep stirring. I'm still at 600 watts. I'm at 218 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been about six minutes to get to this point. I'm at 230 degrees, 600 watts of power. As you can see, the propellant is starting to boil a little bit. That's okay. That's what it should look like. You do not have to heat this really fast. You need to control the heat. So from this point here, I'll probably cook it another couple of minutes and then we'll be ready to cast. When I'm ready to cast, I will put the pan on a hot plate, on a hot pad rather, and take it off the plate. Do not return the pan to the hot plate or the cooktop. Make sure you set it aside, be prepared. Still 600 watts of power, 248 degrees Fahrenheit. I stir it steady, not fast to whip. I don't wanna whip it but I just keep it steady stirred to make sure I don't develop any hot spots. I'm at 260 degrees. I'm gonna go up another five degrees and then pull a pot off the cooktop. I'm going to turn the power up just a little bit to get up to 265 degrees. It won't take very long and then we'll be ready to cast. Still stirring slowly, the propellant is just boiling lightly. I'm going to turn the cooktop off, place the pan on the hot pad, 
Careful, this is still all hot. And then I'm going to pour the propellant. Pour it fairly quickly, get it close to the top, then come back and fill it up more if I need to. Use a craft stick to encourage the propellant to keep moving. It still pours very easily. That's the joy of flexi fuel. Take any leftover fuel and pour it out onto the tray. Now you want to make sure that you have a dry spot to pour any excess propellant on so that it doesn't get all full of the uh, cooking spray. Around seven minutes has passed, so it's time to put the coring tool in. You can wear gloves at this point. It's okay if they overfill, that's good. As you can see, the propellant can still be shaped. Now we'll put our coring guides on the top and make sure the coring tool is straight up and down. It's okay if some of the propellant oozes out. That's a good sign that you have enough to fill it. Then after a couple minutes like this, I'm going to put them on the stands and we'll push the coring tool all the way through. Okay, I'm going to put each one on its stand. This is just a one inch piece of PVC pipe. Careful because everything is still hot at this point. Put our gloves back on and go ahead and push the coring tool all the way through. At this point, it's going all the way through the base. Okay, once it's pushed through the base, keep in mind it's still hot. We'll take our little piece and save that to burn later or we'll just reheat it with more propellant. After we push the coring tool in and a couple of minutes has passed by, we'll just go ahead and apply a little pressure to the top of it. This will help compact the fuel and we should get a little bit of squeeze out. That's good. Then once we've done that, the fuel is still pretty warm but not super hot. Should be able to just peel this off and give it another push. Apply a compression a few times and we're almost ready to pull the coring tool. Okay, now it's time to put the gloves back on and we're gonna pull the coring tool apart. The propellant is still pliable at this point, so you can kind of smush it around a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to take the rest of them apart. Now, we can do some trim up. While the fuel is still pliable, you can go ahead and trim this off. Uh, probably should have done this a little bit sooner, but I am trying to operate the camera at the same time. Uh, while the fuel is still pliable, you can also, if you get one of the uh, cores that's not quite right or you want to uh, smooth it out a little bit, you can run the coring tool through there again. Make sure everything is uh, the way you want it. There, everything looks real good. Now I'll just take the uh, casting tools and go ahead and put them in some soap and water and everything will clean up just right. Now I'd let these set for a day and then I can assemble my H motor. The last thing I wanna point out is that I cut a small chamfer on the top of each grain and the bottom. This helps the grains to ignite in between the two. Now this works fine for an H motor on a larger motor you probably need a little bit more space or a larger chamfer to get all the grains to light at once for the motor to work properly. When you're done, make sure you seal your grains in a bag like this, or if you have any leftover propellant, make sure that that's sealed up too. Make sure you keep everything dry and all your components need to be dry before you even start. The fuel will be ready the next day and it will keep for a year or two. I'm not really sure if it keeps any longer because 
I always burn mine up. And uh, so it makes great rocket fuel. It may or may not work for you. I don't know. This is experimental work. Making the operation safe is up to you. So if you like the channel and you appreciate this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. If you want to support the channel, use the buy me a coffee link or the YouTube thanks button. I'd really appreciate that. So for now, blue skies everyone. Keep the pointy end up, flaming end down. I'll see you in the next video.